Okay, in this video I'm going to discuss a concept called resolving vectors. Now this is absolutely vital. If you can't do this, then you, you will not be able to do anything with vectors. Now, we, I spoke about a video in a video in the past about adding and subtracting vectors. If you don't know how to do that, look at either your textbook or look at the video that I've put up. Just a quick summary. If you have a vector A, a vector B, and a vector C. To, to add vectors, you put the tail of the second one onto the head of the first one and draw your resultant vector from the tail of the first to the head of the second or the third. So if I want to get A plus B minus C, I would say I'd draw A like this. I'd say that's A. I would draw B by putting the tail of B onto the head of A like that. That's B. And then I said minus C. So minus C, if that's if this there is C. Well, this one here is, plus, is, is minus C, like that. And I would draw, put the tail of minus C and the head of B, and draw that one like this. And to get your resultant vector, you go from the tail of the first one to the head of the, uh, the last one, like this. And you draw your arrow like that. So this would be A plus B minus C. And that's just a quick recap on adding vectors and subtracting them as well. So, this vector here that we drew, a plus b minus c, that is your resultant vector. Okay? Or your, uh, your resultant vector, what's the other one? There's another phrase you use, using, I, use, I would call it your resultant vector anyway. So, that's the important vector. And you'd usually, after drawing your resultant vector, you'd get rid of the rest of them because they don't matter. You usually don't care what how you know what other vectors came together to make this one. You just say, well, that's my vector, and that's it. Now, when you're working with forces and so on and you, dimensions, and I've I've spoke there's I have a video up in regard to dimensions, so you should look at that. But sometimes, well, say you've three axes, you've your x, your y, and you might have your z there like this as well. Now you might want to work out which way you which way um, a force is working how much of it is in the z how much of it is in the x axis how much of it is in the y axis so you would say uh, uh, but your 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 resultant vector here could be in any of them it could be in all three axes at the same time and you want to find out like i said how much is in the x how much is in the y how much is in the z now i'm just going to deal with x and y for the moment it's the exact same for the z but uh, it might just confuse things so Let's draw a vector. I'm going to draw a random vector here. I'm going to say that vector is 2 i hat plus 2 j hat. If you haven't looked at my video on unit vectors, look at it uh, if you want. Um, but you could also write this one as 2x plus 2y. Now, how much of that is acting in the... Uh, that's, that's a resultant vector here. Look, there's your resultant vector. Now, what, when you resolve your vector, you want to find out how much of that vector is in the uh, x-axis and how much of it is in the y-axis. So you want to find out its components. So remember when we added two vectors here, we added, let's say, a, we added b, like this, and we got a resultant vector, c. All right? So this c, c equals result, y uh, while A and B equal to component. The component vectors, they're the ones that make it up. They're the ingredients of the vector C. Now, the same thing is, we want to find the components of the vector 2i plus 2j in terms of its x and y axis. So we want to see how much of it is in the x axis. So we want to see how much of it is in the x, how much of it is in the y. So if we were to draw this, you might say 1, 2 units in the x, and 2 units in the y. Or you could say, this vector came from adding the vector 2x, or 2i, and the vector 2y, or uh, the vector 2j. By adding those, and then you get your result. 
So you know that it's two units in the x dimension and two units in the y dimension. So that that is your resultant. Your resultant is trying to see which of the the vectors parallel or the unit vectors parallel to your axis added together gives you your result. So get, let, let's give let's try another one. If we had all right, another one, say if we had this vector here, like that, and I want to find out its component its component unit vectors. You want to find the two vectors when added together give that one. So it could be this vector here and this vector here. Two of those added together will give you a result. Or it could be this vector here and this vector here. Now remember vectors so provided they have the same magnitude and direction they are the same. So this one here is the same as this one. This vector here is the same as this vector. So both of them are giving them the same answer. Well why? because they're the same vectors. So for this resultant vector here, this resultant has a component, this vector and this vector. Its component unit vectors are those two. So you want to find out how big these unit vectors are. So let's draw the same one again. So Say if this was the vector c is equal to minus x plus 2y. Well then look, if you draw this vector here and this vector like that, well you know it's minus 1 in the x and plus 2 in the y. There it is like that. And that's how you uh, that's how you re resolve that vector. However, it isn't as simple as this. It's it, it's it's usually slightly more difficult because like to be honest, that's, you, can, you, can, you should be able to read that yourself. What usually happens is that you're given a vector and you're given its magnitude and direction. So, for example, you might be given the vector um, a is equal to, the magnitude of a is equal to 5 and um, it's at 45 degrees. So you might have this vector. Now that's slightly more difficult. What unit vectors make up that one? Oh, that's, I said 10. What unit vectors make up this vector? Now that's slightly more difficult. Now, first of all, you go about drawing the unit vectors. So you could say you drop your perpendiculars. If you want, you could you think about it that way. Or you could say you draw your unit, your, the two vectors which added together make your resultant vector. You could do that. Whichever way you like to think about it, do it. Just remember that's a 90 degree angle there. You could, like I said, you could be thinking about dropping perpendiculars. Now, we have to do a small bit of trigonometry. You remember this? Sakatoa. That's for helping you remember that sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is equal to uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. And that tan is equal to opposite over adjacent. Okay? Now, We'll just pick sine. So we'll say sine, I'm going to say this is not 45, I'm going to call it just theta. So sine theta is equal to, and I'm going to call this h, the, hy the hypotenuse. Sine theta is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now, if I want to know the value of the opposite, I just bring up the hypotenuse and multiply it by sine theta. If I want to know the value of the uh, if I want to know the value of the adjacent, do the same thing. So I go cos theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. Therefore, the adjacent is equal to the hypotenuse times cos theta. Okay. And that their 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 lengths. So say for example. Say, for example, this hypotenuse was 5 units and was at 45 degrees. Therefore, you would say cos 45 is equal to the opposite, oh sorry, the adjacent over 5. Therefore, the adjacent is equal to 5 cos 45. Similarly, the opposite is equal to 5 times the sine of 45 like that. And there, that's a magnitude. That's an actual length, a number. 
So you would literally do this. You would say, there's the opposite. So this length here is equal to 5 sine 45. This one here is equal to 5 cos 45. What are the directions of the two unit vectors? This one is in this direction. This one is in this direction. Why? Because if they weren't, then when you added them, they wouldn't give the resultant vector here. So what we know is the resultant vector A of magnitude 5 at a direction of 45 degrees is equal to this, is equal to 5 cos 45 x in the x dimension plus 5 sine 45 y. You could write it that way, but we, we're talking about unit vectors. So in, in general, so if you haven't seen the unit vector video yet, just watch it. If you have, well, this will make perfect sense to you. Okay, so the vector A of magnitude 5 in the direction of 45 degrees is made up by adding the vector 5 cos 45 i hat, or 5 cos 45 in the x dimension, plus 5 sine 45 in the y dimension. So just remember as well, of course, that if the vector was here, then you'd have to look at the, the signs of the, uh, the different vectors. So this would be, remember, plus plus, so you have plus plus, minus x, plus y, minus minus, and um, plus x minus y. So this vector up here might read, if that might that, that perhaps might read uh, 5b might be equal to 5 or minus 5 cos 10 plus 5 sine 10, something like that. Notice the signs because it's in minus x and plus y. And the last thing, so that's how you do the cosines and the signs, and the very last thing about resolving vectors is tan. Sometimes you're just given, you might actually be given, that A is equal to 45 degrees, and that somehow you're able to work out that you're given, you're given this and you're given that. So how would you get the magnitude? Or how would you get the magnitude of it? You would get the magnitude, let's speak of the magnitude in a second, but you would say this, you could also say this, that tan 45 is equal to opposite over adjacent, 5 sine 45 over 5 cos 45. And look what happens here. Cancel the 5s and sine over cos. Well, that's tan anyway. And the very, very last thing about resolving vectors is that vectors, when you add two vectors, you're always going to make unit vectors. You will always make a right angle triangle. Something in the i, something in the j, giving you a resultant here. So, to get the magnitude, it's a right angle triangle. The hypotenuse, the opposite, and the adjacent if the angle here is theta. Therefore, h squared is equal to o squared plus a squared. Okay? Like that. Now, let's just prove this. Let's just prove this if we can. Uh, let's just prove this. So, we want to find out the magnitude of a. Remember, the straight angle brackets mean magnitude. Therefore, a squared that's the hypotenuse, is equal to 5 cos 45 squared plus 5 sine 45 squared. So just to get the magnitude, okay, we had a squared. So we have, remember, we had a right angle triangle. So we had the hypotenuse squared is equal to the opposite squared plus the adjacent squared. So there's the opposite, sorry, there's the adjacent, there's the opposite. Be careful when you're squaring both, such that cos 45 is actually 1 over root 2. So it squared is 1 over 2. Add the two together, you get 25 in this case. Get the square root of that to get the magnitude of A. It turns out to be 5. And as you remember from the start, that when we actually drew this, we had our uh, vector A of magnitude 5 at direction of 45 degrees. So you can see that what we did there, breaking it up into its component unit vectors of uh, 5 sine 45 j and 5 cos 45 i worked just perfect because it gave us back the magnitude 5 and the direction 45 degrees as we wanted. So uh, that's a quick tutorial on resolving vectors. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and pass it on to your friends. Thank you.